So far, we have observed the process of respiration, the organs for gaseous exchange in animals. Now let us see in plants. Respiration in plants. So how do plants respire? How do plants get the oxygen that is required? So some people, they think that plants do not require oxygen. Plants also require oxygen. Even though they produce oxygen in the process of photosynthesis, they need oxygen for the process of respiration, for the production of energy and cellular activities. So plants, mainly they get that oxygen that is absorbed from the atmosphere through the stomata. Stomata are present on the surface of the leaf. So leaf, it acts as a respiratory organ. It has got pores through which the oxygen enters. And inside the leaf, if you see the cells of a leaf, if you observe the cells of a leaf, they are loosely packed and you can observe that between some cells, you will find some spaces, air spaces. So through these air spaces, the air diffuses into, this, into the leaf. It diffuses to different cells where the exchange of gases takes place. So that is stomata. And what about the other parts? Leaves, they are with the help of stomata, they are getting the air, they are getting the oxygen. Then what about other parts? Stems, they get lenticels. Lenticels are the other kind of pores that are present on the stems through which the gases enter into the tissue, enter into the stem of the plant. So inside the stem, they have some air spaces between the cells, air gaps. So through these air spaces, the air diffuses to different cells. Here also exchange takes place by diffusion. Even the roots. Even the roots of the plants also have got some pores through which the air is taken in. So that is the reason why the roots, they make, uh, they grow well in the loose soil. Because the roots, they need some support from the soil. They should be held firmly. But at the same time, the roots, they need air also. That is the reason why the fields are ploughed before uh, sowing the seeds. If the seed, it has to grow into a plant, its uh, roots should get air from the soil. Sometimes, in some cases, where the soil is very muddy, swampy, the example is mangroves. If you see the mangroves, mangrove forest, where the roots of the plants are in swampy area, muddy area, waterlogged area. So in such waterlogged condition, there is no possibility of air reaching the roots. In such cases, we observe the trees, they produce some special aerial roots. If this is the stem, they produce some aerial roots. So the roots are coming out of the ground or coming out of the water. So they absorb the air from the atmosphere. So these kind of modifications are observed in plants. So if you observe the plants and trees, here the respiration takes place by stomata. This is one stomata and two lenticels and aerial roots. This is the third one aerial roots. They take the air in. Inside the body of the plant or tree, the conduction of the air, the supply of the air to different cells that takes place by air spaces, air columns through which the air enters to different tissues and at the tissues, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place by the process of diffusion. So here we have an activity to prove two things. One is Carbon dioxide is released during respiration in case of plant respiration. At the same time, heat is evolved during respiration. So here we are not taking any plants. But how can you say that that release of heat or carbon dioxide in plants? We are taking the sprouted seeds, seeds that are sprouting equal to a small plant, plant baby plant. What seeds? We can take Bengal gram. Bengal gram seeds and we can soak them 
tie them in a wet kerchief or a wet cloth keep it aside for one day then you will find that the bengal gram will get small sprouts a small sp sprouted seeds are equal to plants now you can take a bottle a glass bottle or a plastic bottle a wide mouthed bottle and put the seeds inside and close that with a cork before closing with the cork take some injection bottle empty injection bottle and put some lime water tie a thread hang it into the bottle otherwise you can take some lime water in a small beaker and put it inside now close this so these sprouted seeds are growing respiration is taking place and carbon dioxide is released so this carbon dioxide turns this lime water milky this shows that co2 is evolved during the process of respiration so by this experiment we can prove that carbon dioxide is released during respiration in plants now let us look at the second one what does this experiment tells us the same activity we have taken the same bottle which is used in the previous one and in the same way we have taken sprouted seeds but here we inserted a thermometer thermometer so what is this thermometer used for it is used to measure the temperature so inside the bottle first you see the initial temperature how much temperature is there now put the seeds close the bottle with the cork and observe the rise of temperature for 24 hours you will find temperature is raised slowly increases as the respiration is increased the temperature inside the thermometer increases you can record your observations morning 10 o'clock you have started the experiment 11 o'clock what is the temperature 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock likewise for some 5 to 6 hours you can observe you can make a graph and see whether the temperature is increasing or decreasing you can plot it on x-axis and y-axis so in this experiment by this activity we can show that heat is liberated during respiration now let us look at the photosynthesis and respiration what is the difference we find between photosynthesis and respiration these two are very important biological processes which makes the life possible on this planet we know the photosynthesis is a process which fixes the energy solar energy into chemical energy so photosynthesis uh, we see that carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight it gives rise to sugar plus oxygen plus water so here the sugar is produced that is maybe the glucose so this is the reaction in which carbon dioxide and water are the raw materials or reactants product is sugar and oxygen gas is released if you see the respiration it appears quite opposite whereas sugar plus oxygen gives rise to carbon dioxide plus water plus more important energy so you find it opposite reverse here here whatever the reactants are there here these are the end products in respiration the end product of the photosynthesis is the reactant or the starting product of respiration so here we can observe that sugar is converted to energy but whereas in photosynthesis the light energy is converted to chemical energy that is observed photosynthesis takes place only in the cells of the plant which are green and which contain the chloroplast and chlorophyll but whereas respiration takes place in each and every cell because every cell needs energy if you say that a cell a living cell if it is living means it's existing that means it needs energy so it needs to carry out respiration so respiration is observed in each and every cell and we see one more major difference there the reactions the chemical reactions in which bigger molecules are produced from smaller compounds you call it as anabolic reaction so anabolic carbon dioxide water simple simple substances are combined together to form bigger molecules you call it as anabolic process or anabolic reactions whereas 
The bigger molecules like sugar, glucose is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. These reactions are called as catabolic reactions or catabolic process or catabolic process. We call it as catabolic process. Catabolism means converting the big substance into simple substances, smaller units. Anabolism, anabolic reactions. Simple substances are made into uh, much higher or bigger compounds. So, and the last difference between the photosynthesis and respiration is that Photosynthesis, it takes place only under specific conditions. The photosynthesis, it needs light, essential, and it needs certain temperature and humidity. Likewise, many factors are affecting photosynthesis. If you keep a plant in shade, no photosynthesis takes place if there is no light. If you keep a plant in dark, no photosynthesis takes place in dark room. But respiration is com continuous and essential process. In any organism, if it stops, the life ends there. So, respiration also requires so many factors. Oxygen is required and different conditions are required, but it is a very continuous process. Surely, it must continue. Respiration, photosynthesis, there are various factors and sometimes if any of the factors missing the photosynthesis, it stops. But even then it stops, nothing happens to the plant. Plant can cope up with other materials and other things that are available for a certain extent. But whereas, in case of respiration, it is a continuous process, every organism, every cell has to carry out respiration, either aerobic or anaerobic, some respiration must be carried out.